So our study focuses on understanding how the burden of uh, distress in the banking sector is shared among households. Now, after the global financial crisis, academics and policymakers sought to understand uh, the consequences of financial distress, uh, both on the real economy, but also the implication for inequality. And inequality is now at the forefront of the policy debate. Now, what we know from previous studies is that that disruptions in the banking sector can have severe economic consequences. They reduce financial intermediation, uh, leading to higher borrowing costs, uh, more volatile asset prices, and lower economic activity. What we didn't know before our study is how banking sector distress affects a different type of households. And in particular, if households of a certain type suffer more from distress in the banking sector than others. And uh, this is an important question as it helps us understand who are ultimately those who benefit the most from government support to distress financial institutions. And this is key to design policies which are effective in mitigating the consequences of disruptions to the banking sector. Our study reveals a significant inequality in the way banking sector distress affects households. On average, we find that households lose for distress in the banking sector. However, a closer look at the issue uncovers significant heterogeneity in the facts. We find that low-income households are hit hardest, and they experience large declines in their consumption, uh, mainly due to rising borrowing costs and wage losses. High-income households, however, while initially seeing a decline in consumption, they can actually benefit in the medium term. Of course, households at the very top of the income distribution so who receive dividends from banks are going to be negatively affected. However, around 18% of high-income households actually derive some gains. And this is because these are the households that can buy assets uh, when the price of the assets Asset temporary falls, and so they can increase consumption in the medium term thanks to the higher returns on this financial investment. And overall, we find that the consumption of low income households drops over a three year period by about twice that of high income households, which is remarkable. And we find that this is true both in the data and in our model. A key takeaway of our research is that banking sector distress exacerbates inequality, particularly harming low-income households more than high-income households. And this implies that macroeconomic policies that provide financial relief to vulnerable households during financial crises are effective in mitigating the negative consequences of banking sector distress. Our results, however, also suggest that policy interventions aiming at restoring bank intermediation capacity during crises are also effective in uh, leading to welfare gains and uh, mitigating the negative consequences of banking sector distress.